Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you few watercolor effects that can be achieved uh, with uh, using different materials which are uh, really like common household uh, things or uh, which is easily available uh, around you. So just by using some materials how you can just uh, change the texture of watercolor. So today uh, let's dive into that and let's get started. So as you can see we have uh, divided the sheet into eight parts so we are going to experiment with uh, eight textures today but uh, they are not like uh, just those textures there are of course a lot many that, than that so but today let's just uh, check out eight so for this i'm using arches uh, 300 gsm 100 percent cotton paper and uh, this is the cold pressed so i've taken some color uh, in my palette and uh, we're going to go with a wet technique so it means that our surface will be wet while we are applying uh, most of the things. So let's just start with the first one. So I'm going to use a common salt on this. So just sprinkle it all over and you will see the magic happening instantly can you see like uh, you can see like some colors they are just uh, getting absorbed by the salt so you can do it with uh, crystal salts a bigger salt pieces also so let's wait for this to dry we will not uh, take the salt out right now so let's wait for it to dry and then we'll come back to it so now let's move on to another color let's try a blue now so it's the same technique now we are going to use some rice on it to create texture so now for the third experiment i'm taking a green and i've changed my brush So I'm just laying the color flat this time. I've just given it a, a flat coating and what I'm doing is I'm taking a clean brush now and, and I've dipped it in water. So my brush contains water right now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch it in some places. And we will get some blooms. So you can do with a very less water also because uh, over a minute or two they just tend to just uh, widen more. They spread a lot. So you do a lot of practice with this and then you can use it like uh, this can be used to give like as if uh, there's a plant effect, there, there's bushes over there or you know uh, some some foliage is there uh, in the background so you can even use it in the foreground of your paintings also so for uh, this fourth uh, watercolor texture technique uh, I'm not going to paint first uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the paper first so that uh, when I'm painting I uh, get the desired results it's more like restrictive uh, painting so I'm using a masking fluid for this so basically what we do is you can paint or restrict a desired area on the paper sometimes we, we use it uh, to make sun or uh, you can make some foliages and later on come back and take the masking tape uh, masking fluid off I'm taking an old brush so don't ruin a good brush on this so just created a pattern over here and uh, let's wait for this to dry and then we'll put paint on it so meanwhile uh, till our masking fluid is getting all uh, dried up what i did i went and uh, just cleaned my brush with some soap and water so that uh, my brush doesn't get uh, ruined 
but uh, just a heads up you will uh, you should always keep a, a brush aside for uh, using masking tape because it will uh, you know harm your brush so let it dry completely i don't want to uh, ruin the effect so let it dry and till then let's come to a fifth texture so let's uh, go for a really golden yellow for this So I'm just putting the color randomly. But I want the surface to be wet. So just look for the sheen on the paper. If you can see that sheen is there. the paper tape is coming off from here but that's okay so I'm going to use a bubble wrap for uh, creating the texture for this so I've just put the paint and I'm putting the bubble wrap and I'm pressing it down So I can already see some texture happening. So what we'll do is that we'll wait for at least uh, 5 minutes or 10 minutes and uh, then only we will take up the bubble wrap. This looks so exciting right. So let's just wait for it and um, meanwhile this has dried so we can now come back to this. What we're going to do is like I'll be just uh, putting up uh, like these blobs and what I'm doing is uh, you know the, the color is not uniform it will be somewhere a little deep and somewhere it can be a little lighter you can even go and uh, you can even use like two color for this then just use a um, little watery areas to have that a little bit of light and shadow effect so yeah I think this is done now let's uh, wait for it to dry completely and then only uh, we'll peel the masking uh, fluid uh, and uh, let's keep my fingers crossed that it comes off well so now let's come back to our sixth uh, technique of creating textures with watercolor so again I'm just going to put in some color we're going to use a very common technique to lift the color up so we're going to use a tissue paper for this and I've just uh, put it in a ball like this and I'm just going to dab in some places so can you see it has just uh, taken off uh, the color from there it has taken off the pigment from there and uh, you get the shape so you can do this um, with tissue papers you can do this you can even create some some sort of lines if you want you know you can just go ahead and like take like a really sharp um, make an edge over here and then you can try to lift off some colors like this else um, just give it a good dab and uh, you know you can just take the colors like this so can you just see how it's giving you a texture you can use it in a lot of uh, ways you know you can create foliages and one of the most used way for this is to create clouds so just see how the initial color was so deep and uh, but just remember that it will not take the color off completely it will have a very light uh, tint of the color that you have used and uh, maybe like if your color is not uh, like really pigmented and um, then you can uh, 
see a very white surface also beneath so let's move on to a seventh one and uh, this one is quite unique in fact so again we'll just uh, put down some pigments uh, on the paper let's just cover it up So for this I want like really some places to have a little more color, almost a little puddle, very very tiny puddle of uh, color. So just make sure that the color doesn't get dried. So what I want to use is a cling film on this. So take a bigger one than that, uh, your, the area that you require and then try to create some folds when you are putting it. So there, try to create some folds and don't just keep it plain. Then just press along somewhere, a few places. And that's it. Now let's wait for this one also to dry completely. And let's uh, move on to the last one, which is also quite interesting. So again, just put in your watercolor. So this is the magic liquid that uh, we'll be using and this is not water, this is actually rubbing alcohol. So this will create magic on any watercolor surface. So let's see the magic happening. Just dipping a brush in this and just put a drop, just put few drops and just see how it creates these rings. It instantly just displaces the pigment below. You can use it, you can write something from this, but just remember that it, uh, it again keeps on uh, spreading for some time. You can do some final uh, details with this. Can you see how uh, the entire uh, this reddish pink has just taken on another color and it has given us such lovely textures. So now comes the most exciting and the messier part. So let's just take off these and see the effects close up so just rub the salt away from the paper so there can you see the texture that is formed so this can be used to give an effect of tree or even snow. You can use it, uh, you know, uh, just run your imagination while and you can use it for a lot of textures. So now let's go ahead and remove this. Though rice, using rice is always a little trickier. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed and just hoping that it comes out nice.
can you see like how when we had used these salts so it it made like a very tiny tiny bloom and it just uh, soaked in the color and the water from the paper so there was a little blooms very tiny blooms on the paper whereas in this one if you'll see then you'll see that you know there there are like some white spots then there are some deep blue spots so and uh, you know how it is give, given an overall uh, texture to the background also so this you can use it uh, for a frosted look or maybe like you know some markings on wall or um, uh, on snow so now let's take off uh, this again i'm keeping my fingers crossed that they turn out nice so i'm just what i did is like i just took out some from a nail and just trying to you know just pull it in the direction it is you can even rub your finger just make sure that the finger is clean there can you see like how beautifully this one came out so just remember with the masking tape you know the best part is that you can uh, use it again like even after you have painted this and you've got the desired result and uh, you can go ahead and paint another layer a deeper color on this so uh, wherever there is whites wherever there is whites it will stay as it is and wherever there is this light orange it will stay like this and in case you're giving like a deep brown then that will come so you, you can you know do a negative painting with this you can come about and do a lot of you know layers with this so i think it's done in case something is left i'll clean it up later now let's remove this and see wow this texture has come out so nice i love it so our painting is still getting dried it's not completely dry underneath so it will need some more time to dry but um, yeah just look at the texture you know this is just uh, for your imagination you can use it as you want now let's come to this one i hope this is turned out nice really hoping wow can you see how well it has turned out and uh, it's still wet but you know just one suggestion that i'll give you is this is used a lot to give the effect of ice or mountains you know so for that you you can just uh, use your uh, cling wrap a little bit uh, more efficiently you can uh, try to you know place the cling wrap in such a way that you get flat surfaces as well as those crisp edges to give it like the ice is cracking so can you see just uh, this the it looks uh, so pretty and it gives a depth imme immediately so that's it we are done now let me just uh, peel the tape off so that we get a final look at the things so i've just taken off the tape and uh, our paper is completely dry so now let's just check them uh, with a closer look and see this is the effect that we had with salt this is with rice i've labeled them just uh, for a better reference and uh, this one we did uh, with a clean brush uh, with a little water so that's why we got these blooms you can do dots you can do whatever shape you want uh, with this then uh, this one was a fun one this is with bubble wrap i forgot any and um then this is with tissue paper how just dabbing the tissue paper and we're just lifting off the color so probably different colors will give you like a different um, effect like in sense like this has a little uh, light green uh, underneath so in case uh, it's a little uh, less pigmented uh, it's not a very strong um, one or, or it's a little less staining uh, water color then it will be it will give you a much whiter sheet beneath 
and then this one we did with the cling wrap you can have sharp edges also in case you plan it really nicely and then this is with uh, rubbing alcohol and uh, we did uh, blooms with it then you can also use like uh, your uh, brush to make uh, certain uh, fine strokes or dots or whatever you want you can use it uh, that ways too so that's it uh, in today's session we uh, saw uh, eight textures that we created uh, with uh, different uh, common products household products and all and um, how we created these different watercolor textures so there are more maybe we can uh, de delve into them later in some next uh, video but i hope you like this one and uh, hope to see you in the next one